Hey guys, today we're looking at the EVGA hybrid water cooler for the GTX 1080 and 1070s. Um, this specific design is made for the stock PCB, although there is one that's available for the For the Win and classified editions of the EVGA cards. We'll have a link in the video description for those. So the cooler currently retails for about 120 bucks. It includes an AIO liquid cooler with a 120 millimeter radiator, a blower style fan, and a nice, rather nice looking trout. All right, so first let's take a look at the inside of the box. In first thing you'll notice when you open the box is you'll get the shroud with the blower style fan and nice electrostatic packaging. Set that aside. You'll get your instruction manual and warranty information. We'll put that over here. And underneath a cardboard panel, you'll have the cooler itself, which is packaged like so. We'll put those aside for now. And of course all your screws and accessories and whatnot. And now we'll take a look at installing it on this EVGA GTX 1080 Superclocked, which has a standard PCB so it'll fit well with this card. Alright, so first we'll start with moving these uh, screws with the silver lining on them. This will help us take the back plate off. Okay, once those screws are out, you can carefully lift off the back plate. If you have thermal pads sticking, this will probably take a little bit of force and wiggling. Take your time with it. And once it's fully off, set the back plate aside. We won't need it again until we're reassembling everything. Cut. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so first we're gonna remove these four screws which connect the PCB to the rest of the heatsink. Now once you're here, you can actually just lift off the PCB and remove the heatsink entirely. But if you want to get rid of the front plate that's in between the heat sink and the PCB as well, you'll need to remove these five screws here. And since we're, we have access to the back anyway, we might as well. Alright, so now we have all the screws out, we're going to gently lift off the PCB from the rest of the heat sink. Now while you're doing this, you'll notice there are cables here and up here which power the lights and the fans on the heatsink. So you'll just have to gently pick those out as you're moving the heatsink. That's one, and that's two. And now since we already unscrewed the front plate, we can also gently lift up and take that off as well. Put it off to the side. Put your heat sink as well off to the side and now you have just your bare PCB ready to clean up and work on. First thing we're going to do once we take off all the heat sink material is we're going to clean off the GPU die of all its thermal paste. And next once you've done that you can open up the packaging for your shroud. Here's the shroud, we'll set that aside. And here is the actual fan and partial heat sink combo. Alright, so next part we're going to install the front plate with the fan. You'll see the fan um, wire header here, just stick it up through this hole and so it's easy accessible later. We're going to place it on top of the PCB here, flip over the card and screw in the five screws that were used to keep the front plate intact before. So 
for the next step, we're going to attach the actual hybrid AIO cooler. Remember to take this plastic part off before you actually attach it. First, we're gonna take this off and position it like so above the GPU. Once you've lined up all the holes, you can flip it over the whole card. And taking care not to bend anything out of shape, reattach the four spring screws that keep the cooler and the PCB attached. This part might take a little bit of force, but be sure to take your time and use a crisscross pattern to screw in everything, just so you apply even pressure to the GPU die. Okay, for this next part, grab this little rubberized piece that you'll find in your accessories package and nestle it under the two tubes. Securing it using that little silver pillar you see behind the tubes right there. And once that's in, rest your tubes on top of that. You're going to wire these two cables the first one, which doesn't have two headers, is just a female connector. We'll connect to the fan on the radiator, providing power to it. This one will connect the female to the male of the fan header that we pulled through earlier for easy access. And we'll connect this male part down into the PCB. like so. Careful not to bend anything here out of proportion. Now you'll notice that this might be prone to getting in the way of the fan. So you can use the included tape that they give you right here, as well as any other tape you have around the house, to secure this out of the way. Make sure it doesn't make contact with anything. I'm going to put one tape over here. And just tuck this whole part back here, like so. And then use the second tape over here. You can put them however you want. This is just a suggestion. Now that that all is all secured, you can actually finally attach the hybrid P uh, shroud to the PCB. You'll notice in the shroud there's another connector. This is for the light up hybrid logo. You can plug that in over here before you start. Same place where the lighting control for the other heat sink was held. And you may face a little bit of trouble getting everything to go in properly. But what I like to do is angle it under this metal lip where the I.O. is. And then gently lower it down and put some force in the final stages. Now, to actually secure the shroud to the rest of the cooler, you're gonna notice there are three holes on the top, three holes on the bottom, and two screw po mounting points on the end right there. Finally, 
once you have all of those connected, you can optionally put your back plate from before back on. screws are in, you have your back plate on, front plate is secured, everything's good, and you are done. You have now converted your air-cooled card into a water-cooled and hopefully much quieter and cooler graphics card.